Thank you, God, since I'm, I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosened my bounds. You know, this is a song that was recorded by the great uh, composer and singer of stories from Shlomo Kalabach. It's taken from Psalm 116, a prayer that we say in the hollow, praise of God. In this psalm, King David, Dovin Amalek, is thanking God for loosening his bonds, much like a servant who has been condemned to death and his master has loosened his chains and freed him from his death sentence. You know, the question becomes, why does King David, why does Dovin Amalek call himself the servant of his maidservant and not his father? Why connection to his mother? You know, his father was Yishai. Very interestingly, one of the, Gemara says, one of the only four people in history that never sinned. So he was a great tzaddik, a righteous individual. But Yishai was a descendant of Rus, of Ruth. And uh, Ruth was a Moabite. The Torah states very clearly that neither a Moabite or an Ammonite is allowed to convert into Judaism. But King David's grandfather, Boaz, Adjudicated that it was only a man, a Moabite, not a Moabitess, that was not allowed. So he married Ruth, and from that union came Dovinamela, and of course Yishai, his father. In Yishai's later years, after giving birth to six children, six sons, he was troubled that maybe, maybe his grandfather Boaz had erred, and that he really was not allowed to marry a Jewish woman. So on that debate in his mind, he separated from his wife and he took his maidservant and he said to her that if I'm Jewish, I've freed you and now you're a Jew. And if I'm not, then again, you're a maidservant and I can be with you. So that's what he did. 
But you see, Deborah's mother still wanted more children from her righteous husband. So much like Rachel and Leah, where Leah was in the marital bed even though Yaakov thought it was Rachel, the two women exchanged places. And one night, Deborah's mother crept into the marital bed. And unbeknownst to Yishai, she was there with him and conceived Devon Amelon. He never knew. And when their brothers saw that their mother was pregnant, they went to their father and felt, thought that since she had had an illicit relations, she should be put to death. Yishai said no. He said, let her have the child and we'll bring the child up as my own, but we'll put him away. And so it was. Devon and Malik was born. And he was separated from the family, really. They turned him into a shepherd. And he spent most of his time out in the field with the sheep. And it wasn't until Shmuel, Samuel the prophet, came to anoint a king to replace King Saul. And he came to anoint a king from the six sons, or seven sons, of Yishai. And Yishai brought out his six sons. Adiniel, a very, very, very royal looking stature. And Shmuel was certain that this would be the king, God's choice. And when he went to pour the oil over his head, it wouldn't pour. It wouldn't pour over the second son, nor the third, nor the fourth, nor the fifth, nor the sixth. And Yishai said, let's go eat. <laughs> Shmuel said, I didn't come to eat. I came to anoint a king. You must have another son. And Yishai said, well, there's a young lad out in the field. David was 27. Shmuel said, bring him. And when Sh Sh Shmuel saw David, David was a ruddy looking person, not a kingly looking person, more of a person of the earth. But when he went to pour the oil, the oil poured. And Shmuel realized that this was to be the next king of Israel. And that's why Dovin and Malik says, I'm the, I'm the son of your maidservant. It's interesting, he calls himself a Abdaka, I am your servant, which is very important. Because an Evid, a servant, has no will of his own. He's totally negated, totally bottled to the king. So on the one hand, he's a nothing. And on the other hand, we say Melech, Ebed Melech Melech. That the servant of a king is a king. Because anything you do to the servant, you're doing to the king. He has the king's ear. Not only that, it's an interesting phenomenon that when he refers to his mother, Judaism doesn't follow the father. Judaism follows the mother. We have a precept that the father, we call someone by the father's name, because we have a assumption that he is the father. But we can't be 100% sure. But a mother? Hmm, no doubt. It's interesting that the Hebrew word for mother is aim, spelled aleph and a mem. The next letter after an aleph is a bays. The next letter after a mem is a nun, spells the Hebrew word ben. So from a mother comes a child. And that's why Judaism follows the mother, not the father. In Dana Hashem, Dana Hashem, Iyani Adecho, Dana Hashem, Dana Hashem, Iyani.
for listening and attending. Again, please push the like button and subscribe and share it with your friends. Have a great Shabbos, a great week. God should bless you with only good. We should see Mashiach soon. Thank you.